Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to find the derivative of 4 times arc sine of x plus 2. And so we know that the derivative of the inverse function of sine, or arc sine of u, is equal to u prime, the derivative of u, divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. And so in this example right here, u is equal to x plus 2. And so this will be equal to that constant multiple 4 times the derivative of arc sine of x plus 2. And so we'll start by taking the derivative of that inside function, x plus 2, and the derivative of x is just 1, right? The derivative of x to the first power is just equal to its coefficient, which in this case would be 1. And so we'll have 1, and then the derivative of 2 is 0, because 2 is a constant, and the derivative of all constants is 0. And so we would be adding 0, but we don't really need to write that. And so then that means that 1 is the derivative u prime of our function u within our arc sine function. Okay, and so then that will be divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared, which in this case u is x plus 2, and so that will be the square root of 1 minus x plus 2 squared. And so to simplify, this will be equal to 4 divided by the square root of 1 minus x plus 2 squared and that is the derivative of this function. Next, we wanna find the derivative of six times arc cosine of x divided by three. And so in this case, we need to use a different derivative rule for the arc cosine function, but you'll notice that the derivative of the arc cosine function is almost the same as the arc sine function. The only difference is that it's negative, okay? And so if we use this derivative rule for this function, we will have that this is equal to this constant multiple of six, times the derivative of our cosine of x divided by three. Now in this case, x divided by three is u, and so the first thing we wanna do is take the derivative of u, and so the derivative of x divided by three, or one-third times x, is just going to be one-third, right? The derivative of x to the first power is just equal to its coefficient, which is one-third. All right, but then don't forget this negative here. Remember, we have to negate that derivative, and so that will be negative one-third, and that will be divided by the square root of one minus u squared, which is going to be x divided by three squared. And so we'll have x divided by three squared. Okay, and so if we simplify this, we can multiply six by negative one-third, and six divided by three is two, and so this will be equal to negative two divided by the square root of one minus x divided by three squared. And so if we square x, that will be x squared, and that will be divided by three squared, which is nine. All right, and so then this would be a perfectly acceptable answer for the derivative of this function. But if you wanted to, you could simplify this a little bit more and get rid of this fraction inside the square root. And the way you would do that is multiply by a form of one of the square root of nine divided by the square root of nine. And the reason I picked that is because multiplying the square root of nine by this square root will allow me to multiply nine through the contents of that square root. So we'll be multiplying nine by one and nine by this fraction, which will cancel out with this nine in the denominator. Okay, and so on the top here, since we don't have a square root, we can just rewrite the square root of nine to be three and that will still be a form of one that we are multiplying this fraction by. And so if we do that, this will be equal to negative six divided by the square root of nine times one, so that will be nine minus x squared, right? That nine and this nine will cancel out, and so then this would be our final answer, which is a little bit nicer than this answer. All right, so next we have the derivative of eight times arctangent of the square root of x. And then we have our derivative rule here for the derivative of the arc tangent function. And for this example, u is equal to the square root of x. And so to start, we'll have that this derivative is equal to this constant multiple of eight times the derivative of arc tangent of the square root of x. And so we'll have to take the derivative of the square root of x because we're going to have u prime divided by one plus u squared. And so in order to find the derivative of the square root of x, it might be helpful to rewrite it as x to the one half power. And then we can see how to use the power rule to take its derivative. And so we'll multiply the exponent down. So we'll have one half times x to the power of one half minus one. And so one half minus one is actually just negative one half. And so we'll have negative one half. And that will be divided by 
1 plus u squared, and so we'll have 1 plus the square root of x squared, and so we'll have the square root of x squared. All right, and so then if we simplify, this will be equal to 8 times 1 half, that's just going to be 4, so we'll have 4 times x to the negative 1 half power, divided by 1 plus the square root of x squared, and remember that when you square a square root, they kind of cancel each other out, and so we're just going to be left with x, and so we have 1 plus x in the denominator. All right, and then we can simplify this one more time by moving this x with a negative exponent to the denominator, and that will give it a positive exponent, and so this will be equal to 4 divided by x to the positive 1 half power times 1 plus x. Right, so when we move this to the denominator, it's going to be multiplied by 1 plus x, and so we need to remember to put parentheses around those two terms. And then we can rewrite x to the 1 half power to be the square root of x, and so our final answer is that this is equal to 4 divided by the square root of x times 1 plus x, and that is the derivative of this arctangent function. Next up, we have the derivative of 1 plus x squared times arc cotangent of x. And so for this derivative, we are going to need the derivative rule for the arc cotangent function, which the derivative is very similar to the derivative of the arc tangent function, except it is negative. And so for this derivative, we are also going to need to use the product rule because we have a product of two functions. We have this function right here, 1 plus x squared times this function, arc cotangent of x. And so if you don't quite remember the product rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference. But if we use that, we'll have that this is equal to our first function, 1 plus x squared, times the derivative of the second function, and so the derivative of arc cotangent of x, if we use this formula, will be negative u prime, which is the derivative of u, and so u in this case is x, and so the derivative of x is just 1, so we'll have negative 1, and that will be divided by 1 plus u squared, which we said u is x, and so we have x squared, all right? And then we will add that to our second function, which is arc cotangent x times the derivative of that first function. And so the derivative of 1 is 0 because 1 is a constant, and the derivative of x squared is 2x if we use the power rule, right? We multiply the exponent down, so we have 2 times x, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, and so we're left with an exponent of 1. So we have 2 times x to the first power. Okay, and so then if we simplify, notice that we have 1 plus x squared in the numerator and 1 plus x squared in the denominator. And so those two quantities will actually cancel out, and so we'll just have negative 1 plus arc cotangent x times 2x. And so if we reorder those terms, we'll have that this is equal to 2x times arc cotangent of x minus 1. And that is the derivative of this function. Next, we have the derivative of the natural log of arc secant of x. And so for this derivative, we're going to need to know the derivative rule for the arc secant function. And so we have that right here. And in order to take the derivative of this function, we are going to need to know how to take the derivative of the natural log function. And so remember that the derivative of the natural log of u is equal to 1 divided by u times the derivative of u, u prime. And so in this case, u is equal to the arc secant function. And so what we're going to have here is that this is equal to 1 divided by arc secant of x times the derivative of arc secant of x. And so if we use this derivative rule, where u is equal to x, we will have u prime, which is the derivative of u, and the derivative of x is just 1. So we have 1 divided by the absolute value of u, and so we will have the absolute value of x times the square root of u squared, so that means we will have x squared minus 1, all right? And so if we multiply these two functions together, we will have that this is equal to 1 divided by arc secant of x times the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1, and that will be the derivative of this function. All right, so next up we have the derivative of arc cosecant squared of x. And so in order to find this derivative, we will need to use our final derivative rule for inverse trigonometric functions. But first, before we can use this rule, let's rewrite this function. Instead of having arc cosecant squared x, 
let's just write it to be that arc cosecant function quantity squared. And so what I mean is that this will be equal to the derivative of arc cosecant x squared. And that will help us see how we will take the derivative of this function. Right now we can see that we are going to need to use the chain rule because we have this arc cosecant function inside a quantity squared. And so when we use the chain rule to take the derivative of this function, note that the outside function is the quantity squared and the inside function is the arc cosecant function. And so we'll start by taking the derivative of the outside function. And so this will be equal to that exponent multiplied down. So we'll have two times arc cosecant x to the power of two minus one. And that will be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. And so to take the derivative of arc cosecant of x, we need to use this rule. And you might have noticed that this is the same derivative as arc secant of u, except it is negative, so just keep that in mind. But in this case, u is equal to x. And so u prime, the derivative of u, will be the derivative of x, which is just one. And so in the numerator of the derivative, we will have one, but it needs to be negative for this derivative rule. So we'll have negative one. And then in the denominator, we will have the absolute value of u, and so that will be the absolute value of x times the square root of u squared, which is going to be x squared minus one. And so if I clean up a little bit, we could simplify our work here and notice that this power would just be one. So we'd have two times arc cosecant of x times negative one, and so this will be equal to negative two times arc cosecant of x divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus one. And that is the derivative of this function. All right, so next we have that the function f of x is equal to arc sine of x plus arc cosine of x. And we wanna find f prime of x or the derivative of this function. And so in order to take the derivative of f of x, we just need to take the derivative of arc sine and arc cosine. And so we have our two derivative rules down here for each of these functions. And so we'll go through this derivative and we'll have that f prime of x is equal to the derivative of arc sine of x, where x is u, and so we'll start by taking the derivative of u, that would be u prime, and the derivative of x is one, so we'll have one divided by the square root of one minus u squared, which is x squared. And then we will add that to the derivative of arc cosine x. Now remember, and I think I mentioned this earlier, the derivative of arc cosine is the same as arc sine, except it's negative. And so we can save some time here and just rewrite this expression, but make it negative, because that is what we would find if we were to use this rule on this arc cosine function. And so we'll have negative one divided by the square root of one minus x squared. But now notice, if we are adding an expression to itself but negative, then it's just going to cancel out, and our derivative here, f prime of x, will just be equal to zero, right? And so that might seem odd, but that is the derivative of this function. Since the derivative of arc cosine is just the negative version of the derivative of arc sine, those two expressions will cancel each other out, and we're just gonna be left with zero. Next we have that y is equal to sine of arc cosine of 2x, and we want to know the derivative y prime. And so once again, here's our derivative rule for arc cosine of u, and in this case u is equal to 2x, but before we get there, we are going to need to use the chain rule for this derivative because we have arc cosine of 2x inside the sine function. And so we'll start by taking the derivative of the outside function, which is the sine function. And so if we do that, we'll be taking the derivative of sine of this inside function, and the derivative of sine is cosine. And so y prime will be equal to cosine of arc cosine of 2x. And that will be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is arc cosine of 2x. And so we'll use this derivative rule down here where u is equal to 2x. And so we'll start by having the negative of the derivative of u, and so the derivative of 2x is just going to be 2, right? The derivative of x to the first power is just equal to its coefficient, and so we have 2, but remember to make it negative, so we have negative 2 divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared, which is 2x, and so we have 2x squared, okay? And so if we simplify, remember that arc cosine is the inverse function of cosine, 
And when you have an inverse function inside the original function, they undo each other or cancel out and you're just gonna be left with what is inside that inverse function. And so y prime will be equal to 2x, right? This cosine and this arc cosine will cancel out. So we're just left with 2x times negative two divided by the square root of one minus 2x squared, which if we square two and x, we will have four x squared. And then one more simplification, we can multiply 2x times negative two, and we'll have that this is equal to negative 4x divided by the square root of one minus 4x squared. And that is the derivative of this function. So for our last example, we have that y is equal to arctangent of x divided by x, and we wanna find the derivative dy dx. And so in order to find the derivative of this function, we are going to need to use the quotient rule because we have a quotient of two functions, right? We have arctangent of x divided by x. And so if you don't quite remember the quotient rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference. But if we use it, we will have that dy dx is equal to the denominator function, which is x times the derivative of the numerator function. And so now this is where our derivative rule for our tangent of u comes into play. Now u is equal to x, and so u prime will just be one, right? The derivative of x is just one, so we will have one divided by one plus u squared, which will just be x squared, and so we'll have x squared. And then we will subtract the numerator function, which is arc tangent x times the derivative of the denominator function, and the derivative of x is just one, and that will be divided by the denominator function squared, and so we will have x squared. Okay, and so if we simplify, this will be equal to x divided by one plus x squared minus arc tangent of x divided by x squared. And so this would be an acceptable answer for the derivative of this function, but if you wanted to simplify it a little bit more by getting rid of this fraction within a fraction, you can multiply by a form of one of that denominator. So what we'll do is we'll multiply by one plus x squared divided by one plus x squared. And if we clean up our work here and multiply this quantity through the numerator and through the denominator, we will have that this is equal to x minus arc tangent x times one plus x squared divided by x squared times one plus x squared. Right, so when we multiply one plus x squared by this first term, the denominator will cancel out with that, and so we're just left with x, and then arctangent x is multiplied by that quantity right here, and our denominator is also multiplied by it right down here. Okay, and so that will be my final answer for the derivative of this function. All right, and so that was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below, but if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now, so I will see you next time.